So we'll, we'll jump on right now to Joan and discuss more about why our services. And she's a freelancer and she has ex extensive experience with the Associated Press and we've gotten a lot to learn from her. So I think a lot of people get confused about what exactly the Associated Press is. Do, is anybody here clear on what it is? I'm not no, no, no. That's it. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, the AP was formed in the mid-1800s as a way of newspapers to pool their resources to get information outside of the United States. And it is not a not-for-profit organization. It has 1,800 member newspapers. And those member newspapers subscribe to this service. And so what the AP does is it has to give the members what they want. So if the members say we want more photos, the AP gives them more photos. Um, one thing that I think is very interesting, with, with, it's also the largest and the oldest <coughs> most gathered organization in the, in the world, actually. And on any given day, half of the world's population will be reading some form of AP news. So what happens is, I, I can just give you an example. I did a story on Peruvian cooking based on a restaurant that's here in Dina. And I worked out with my editor in New York what I was going to do for that story. I send her the story. Um, it goes out on a Friday as part of a food package that they put out with s several different types of uh, things, which some of them could be recipes in the package, some could be cookbook, uh, not reviews, but uh, briefs about cookbooks, uh, a focus on something in particular. That goes out to all of the members. Here in Portland, the Oregonian ran the story, full page, with the, with the um, they're in on the back of the food section, full page with lots of photos that um, the AP had an AP uh, photographer do the photos. But the impact of the AP is this. To this day, Mama Doris at the Peruvian restaurant says that people come in with clips in their hand of this restaurant that they, they've read about in Portland. Similarly, if you were to go on um, the internet and Google my name, and to put AP writer, you would see stories that I've written years ago on the internet. So you have a sense of the impact of a wire service. What does that mean for you, though? Um, I had a conversation last night with the current food editor, because the food editor has changed uh, in the past year and a half. And I said to him, if people want to get information to you, should they just go to bureaus? Because the AP has bureaus in every city, well, in, in every state in this country. There are something like 250 bureaus around the world in 90-something countries. Um, he said, don't go to the bureau, go to him directly. So I'll be happy to share that email for you. <laughs> and, uh, but he did say, we did talk about um, your being in touch with your local bureau. And he did say it's not a bad idea for you to do that. He was just concerned that your news would get mixed up in the shuffle in the local bureau because you can imagine it. The AP is a 24-hour, seven-day news organization, so each one of those bureaus is getting that information. They're covering the, the state politics, they're covering economics, they're covering all sorts of issues. So he was concerned that your news would get lost in the bureau. But you, but he did say you should you should know your structure. You should figure out who's on the AP, where you are, and that you can do by going to a website called www.ap.org. Okay. And that also explains a lot about what the AP is. The AP does not have its own website other than this. Because, because it's a member organization, it would be competing against other members by having its own website. But you will see AP News on yahoo.com. You will see it on msnbc.com. And the interesting thing is that with this change in news delivery with the internet, the AP actually is becoming a more familiar name, I think. Because you're seeing uh, you know, Yahoo News features AP, the top AP stories. So people are beginning to hear AP. If you watch CNN, you'll hear, you know, according to AP. As the elections come up, you'll hear that. So that's news that's being generated from bureaus around the country. So we're just like, we're like a newspaper in a sense, but a mini, a mini news gathering organization. That's helpful. And as a freelance writer then, so do you often, are you receiving any more of assignments, or are you pitching more stories to your editors? Both, actually. I mean, I'm currently working on three pieces, and they were all assigned. But um, other pieces that I've done, I usually pitch. Okay. So you develop relationships with your editors. But we were just talking about this earlier. Uh, now, my editor that I've worked with for 
10 years retired a year and a half ago. So now I'm in the process of de developing a new relationship with her replacement, who is doing things very differently. She was she was based out of New York. This uh, the gentleman who succeeded her is based out of a bureau in Concord, New Hampshire. So you know, even in terms of my having access to meet him, I won't. When I go to New York, I usually meet with people from New York, but I won't. I won't meet him. So um, it changes in the news business. Your, your, your editors change. And sometimes for freelancers, that's good because they may go to a new organization or a new magazine and then you have a, a chance to publish in that new magazine. Plus, you've been publishing where they were, so then you, it increases your net. But um, that's all to say that you have to stay on top of who's where in the news business because it's changed. A lot of editors now are on the other side of the fence. They're taking early retirement. There's a big buyout that's going on locally. And you know a lot of people are, are doing that. So you just have to stay current. With, um, who's where. Thank you. That was very helpful.